Okay, colleagues, for our last talk before we have a break, um, we have uh, Laura Hollinshead, who's presenting on behalf of herself and colleagues, humanizing the lived experience of mental health patients through immersive video. So, Laura, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, I'm here to talk uh, today about uh, an issue that arose when we were looking at um, teaching our mental health nursing students. And they were finding it difficult to replicate some of the scenarios that the students might encounter in practice um, within uh, the on-campus learning that was taking place. So with adult nursing, for instance, you would find that people can take um, blood pressure um, and use some of the equipment, either on dummies or on uh, real patients, but it's actually really difficult to actually replicate the types of scenarios that those students are going to encounter out in practice around um, mental health patients. We also wanted to make sure that the students could tune into the, um, what it felt like to be a mental health patient in the different situations that those um, people are going to actually experience within a healthcare setting. So I'm going to uh, play a video here from um, the discipline lead for mental health um, at the university. Just get it up. Hello, my name is Alison Kildorf. I'm Head of Mental Health Nursing at the University of Derby. Um, I've been working with a colleague in uh, learning technology, Laura Hollinshead, and Gemma and Victoria from the Mental Health Nursing Team. And we've been working on a project in the past few months to look at the immersive um, experience, an immersive video experience, to see whether that would be helpful in humanising the lived experience of mental health service users. Um, as an element of um, education around mental health. We know um, that simulated practice is a really effective way, a very beneficial way for student nurses to be able to um, d develop and practice and rehearse some of, some of the skills. And we also know that some simulated practice techniques um, are very, very widely used in a whole range of different fields. But in mental health nursing, some of our skills are slightly different, less technical. So we need to find different ways to be able to understand how we help people develop those skills and how we measure whether that learning is helpful or useful and meaningful, most importantly. We want to know whether it can have an impact on practice. We want to think about design and delivery of future sessions, if it's, if it's a feasible project. So therefore we need to collect feedback uh, because we want to know whether this is worth taking forward and whether we can refine and use it much more widely, both locally, nationally and perhaps internationally in the future. Okay, so I'm just going to go to my next slide to, get, <laughs> to avoid the extra things that are on there. Okay, so... Uh, one of the things that we wanted to do and ensure we'd done with these videos is that we wanted to make sure that it was actually sustainable. So we wanted to look at these videos being created to be reusable and reusable as much as possible in different uh, contexts. We wanted to make sure that it was also scalable as well because we've actually had seen an increase in our nursing students at the university. Um, partly due to the bursaries changing, and that has obviously created more challenging uh, delivery in terms of the teaching. So we wanted to make sure that this could actually be scaled up. So we tried to keep it as low cost as possible. We based it on a bring your own device um, aspect as well. So we were utilizing the students' use of technology. Um, and all we did really was we actually supplied some headsets uh, for the VR aspects of when we actually used 360 video. So our academic staff uh, wrote the script and they based this around some of the practice that they'd seen out there when they had been working, um, but also some of the experiences they may have heard from other people and practitioners out there in the NHS. We looked and focused on creating, recreating this, the patient's journey at five key points within that process. So we looked at a home visit where um, a mental health practitioner had gone out to, to the home and was talking about a mission. 
Uh, we looked at a situation where they're actually going onto the ward for the first time, um, focusing on you know, the elements uh, that might be a bit different for that person, having never experienced that before. Again, we looked at uh, some communal areas within the wards where they would get admitted and focused on how that might, experience might feel and the different types of people that they might encounter. Uh, we also uh, created a situation where they were outside a meeting room, which they were due to go into. So again, they were hearing and experiencing thing there, things there. And then finally, they would attend a multidisciplinary meeting, which is where different uh, healthcare practitioners will come together to discuss uh, the health needs of that individual. So we wanted to make sure that it was really reusable. So we actually made the individual gender neutral, ethnicity neutral. You do not see them. You actually don't hear from them. Um, really to try and help immerse that student within that patient's journey so they can really feel like um, they are the person that we called it Sam. We also had it so that all of the videos were talking to camera as well. So they the um, talking when they're talking directly to Sam, they're always facing the camera, so it really does feel like you're you are that person. And when we actually utilised the 360 element, because we didn't use that in all of the videos, um, we were able to then give the students agency over that situation, so they were able to actually look around and view different aspects of that context, and you know that they could actually feel like they were the patient and they had control over that situation to an extent. So in creating the videos, um, it took about a day to film. Um, it had about 25 different people involved in that. Um, most of those were actually actors within the actual scenario itself. Um, there was academics, we had experts by experience which were actually ex-patients involved in the filming and we also had NHS staff as well playing the different roles that we put in there. Uh, one of the aspects that took the majority of the time on the day in the filming was to try and ensure that the different um, people were in the right place at the right time. So in terms of how this was actually delivered to the students, there was pre-sessions instructions that were actually sent out to the students to try and get them skilled up on using their own devices. To, to ensure that they were comfortable with doing that. It was delivered as an all-day workshop uh, within a simulated practice module, um, so as part of one of those sessions. In terms of how we got the, the videos to the students, we used QR codes and short URLs, so we tried to make it as easy and quick to access as possible. And then we actually gave them a mixture of headsets, um, but we found that there was a bit of a difference between some people preferred the headsets, some people didn't, some people just used their phone and scrolled around. Um, so it, it was kind of a bit of both, but a lot of them did actually have a go with the headsets. Um, and really the focus was on the fact that they were using their own technology. So hopefully it's something they're a little more familiar with than picking something up that they aren't, um, haven't used before. So in terms of the numbers of students, this was delivered to 54 students, um, but this was as two groups uh, at two different campuses at the university. They were first year students, and it's important to consider that about three quarters of the students who actually took part were female, um, but there were still a good proportion of male students who, who also took part. So the main part of this is to think about what did the students actually think? So we asked the students three statements to answer three statements um, and to look at their agreement for these statements before and after having watched the videos. Um, we didn't actually see a big difference in the agreement levels because actually most of them agreed to these statements prior to seeing the videos, but we did see a shift in whether they agreed agreed or strongly agreed. So that's where we saw the biggest difference. So it's really that those things were actually kind of backed up by what they already knew, but that their feeling about those felt stronger. So when they were asked around uh, understanding the lived experience, uh, we found that around 16% increase in terms of their agreement to that. In terms of whether they empathised with the lived experience of uh, service users, users, we had an, about a 19% increase. 
And in terms of critically reflecting on the nuances within their own practice, we actually had a 23% increase in terms of their agreement to that statement. Um, so we felt that was really, really positive to see. In terms of uh, the making changes to their practice, which is one of the key things that we want to see from any of the teaching that we do, 74% um, of them are actually agreeing to that. And we also had the fact that 94% of them actually got the fact that the videos had made them consider something they'd not thought about before in terms of their practice, which is one of the key things we wanted to get out of this, especially in terms of you know, a simulation. Um, that's one of the, the key areas that is the purpose of that type of session. So in terms of how they would actually change their practice, so they wanted to, um, or we found that, the, again, a lot of this is actually backing up what they already are going to be learning within their courses, but um, in increased empathy, being mindful, being considerate, thinking how the patient feels, reflecting, you know, thinking about the lived experience, um, you know, just it reinforces the key aspects that we were trying to get out of the, the session and trying to humanise that, that experience of the patients. In terms of the, the video usage, uh, it was half hadn't used uh, VR before. In terms of the headsets, we actually, that figure is actually quite high based on what we actually found. A lot of them did use the headsets, but there was at least half of them who were tending to not use them again when they were actually being used uh, for the 360 video. They tended to just revert back to it, watching it on their devices. Um, so, that, so there's quite a lot of them that weren't actually keen on using the headsets. And actually the use of their own device, we would expect that to actually be higher than the figure shown, just because a lot of them are probably thinking about the headsets rather than their actual mobile device. Um, in terms of the effectiveness of the videos, uh, we tended to, to find that um, students were really positive about it. And when they were being asked whether they would look at it again, often it was around things that they'd missed um, in, in the first time that they looked at it or areas that had been discussed within the session that they didn't see, but they would like to then go back and view again. Um, so again, it was re really positive in terms of the fact that they were interested in re-engaging with those particular resources. In terms of improvements, um, one of the aspects was around the technical improvements, so they were sound issues, so a lot of them mentioned that were, there were sound issues on their own devices, and also compatibility with their own devices. Some of this may be down to the fact that uh, some of them didn't do the preparation for the session in terms of actually trying things out before the session, um, and often came without having done that, so that would obviously improve things but some of it was also to do with trying to get the VR headsets to work with their own devices because they wouldn't have had a chance to do that beforehand um, unless they've got ones at home so again some of it was uh, around that. One of the interesting things that came out of this was around authenticity so um, we actually had because there were academic staff in there who they've already seen that didn't feel authentic to them so um, it didn't feel quite as immersive as it could have done if they didn't actually know those individuals. Um, and the other aspect that I found quite interesting was that they didn't like the idea that they couldn't respond as Sam or they didn't hear Sam's voice as part of it, um, which partly showed that they didn't feel that they were Sam in that situation. Um, but also it was interesting because I don't really know how you could have actually added that in um, to actually have them responding as Sam as part of uh, those videos. So in terms of next steps, what we'd like to do uh, is we'd like to see about how we can support academic, other academic staff to do a similar thing. Um, and we'd also like to look at how we can involve interprofessional learning in this. So this was written and created by mental health nursing, but those nursing uh, students will come into contact with lots of different practi practitioners, social workers, occupational therapists. So it'd be really good to try and combine that. Um, so just to say, there's a couple of uh, QR codes here, which do actually link to a couple of the videos if you wanted to have a look at them. 
Um, and yeah, so any questions? Uh, again, another perfectly timed presentation, so thank, thank you, Laura. Thank you. Um, uh, I think we'll go to the, the, the floor first of all before we look at VVOX. Are there any questions from in the room? Uh, gentleman at the very back row, I think, second back. Is it on? Yes, it is. Uh, hi, Laura. That's brilliant. Um, I, apologies if I didn't notice, but did you say you'd contextualise the videos in terms of activities the students would have performed before or after, or do they simply just watch them and reflect on the experience? So it is contextualised. Um, there's usually a bit of an overview of who Sam is. Um, however, that can be adapted. So you can present that individual with certain um, mental health conditions, but you can also then change that for another context. So you could then present it to a secondary group of students and then present with a different context. Um, so that's why we've tried to, within the videos themselves, we've tried to keep that out of it a little bit. It does confuse the students to an extent because I think they're expecting something that is heavily contextualized but it does make them a lot more reusable um, in terms of actually then going on to use them with other groups of students. Great stuff. And were there actually activities that the students were expected to perform sort of after watching them? I'm just interested in yeah, that sorry. sort of context. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they would usually watch one of the videos and then they would then uh, work as a group to discuss what had been seen um, and then to kind of... So the, the, start of the activity was focused on how that patient's feeling so how do you think how did you feel how did you feel in that situation so you're trying to get them to consider how that felt for them as a patient and then moving on to what practice are you seeing how could that be improved um you know what could you do differently in that context great thank you and uh, we, have, we have another question at the front Hi, Sandra Huskinson from Loughborough University. Can you see this particular method um, using, using it for another topic or another area of expertise that you might uh, be able to help students with? We certainly see uh, that this could work really well in a lot of he other healthcare subjects. Um, so we can, I've talked to people about using it in social work, occupational therapy, and they've been really interested in doing something similar. Part of it's around the commitment of time to create the actual script which is the thing that actually takes the longest um, to do. Um, but also, we can see its application in things like policing, law, um, and other areas where case studies are used quite heavily. Um, I, th I think getting students to immerse themselves in an experience they may not have had before, so we'll work with first year students who perhaps haven't gone out on placement or not, have not gone into a work context um, would work. So, for instance, in a um, courtroom, and uh, getting to experience that as a witness or, uh, you know, as a defendant might be a really good experience for them to have prior to doing that themselves, because they're not going to necessarily see it from that perspective. Okay, thank you. Um, we had some good engagement on VVox. I think in at least a couple instances, colleagues have answered each other's questions. So I'm just going to pick out one, which is... Um, uh, Obviously, a kind of a straight-off question that no one's responded to yet. So this, this one around, um, uh, there's a couple around alternatives. So we take this one. Did you consider issuing students with their own Google Cardboard headsets rather than having a mixture of headsets and platforms? So uh, we did consider doing that. Um, but there, there was an issue around trying to get access to those and budgets and things like that. So in the end, we've got a central set of VR headsets um, hoping that those will work with more different types of technologies that the students have got. Um, but again, actually, because we've not invested in a set for every single student, we got them to share them. And actually, that's turned out to be the right thing to do because a lot of them didn't actually like using them. Okay, great, thank you. And um, we will take another question that is hopefully quite straightforward to answer in the last minute. And again, it's about alternatives. Uh, the one at the top, H5P is a branching scenario activity. Um, do you think you could use this app as well? The demo content is similar to what you've been showing us today. 
you could do. Uh, I think in terms of a branching activity, it does get more complicated. So if you're giving students choices to make, then you're going to have to create more videos. That will take a lot more time. Um, so the, and the different scenarios will then have to be written. So I think the approach that we took was um, more kind of scalable in, and doable within the time scale that we had. Great. Thank you very much indeed. Apologies to any questions we didn't get to. We're now on time. Could we thank uh, Laura and our other speakers again for this session, please? Edina's work with learning technologists helps to develop skilled, data literate students who can change our world for the better. Teachers and students can develop and share coding skills with multiple, our Jupyter Notebook servers. Our Digimap services deliver high quality mapping data for all stages of education. Future developments include a text and data mining service, working with satellite data and machine learning, and smart campus technology.